tonight on Be Something Wonderful, impressing and reprogramming the subconscious mind and the law of assumption. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators and members, welcome back. As promised, a big video tonight, and this is really based on a discussion that I had with one of our subscribers and a big supporter of Be Something Wonderful, Mitch. Mitch, thank you. It was an amazing discussion last night. Mitch is an expert on, on the teachings of Neville Goddard and a very powerful creator. And so he pointed out during our discussion last night and reminded me of a lecture that Neville gave in February 1964 called The, Internal, the, Eternal, the Eternal Play. And during this lecture, interestingly, Neville mentions Muhammad Ali, or then known as Cassius Clay. And the fight that, that, that when, when Muhammad Ali, or as Cassius Clay, fought Sonny Liston in February 1964, that was the very night that appears that Neville was giving that lecture and actually mentions him as a metaphysical example of the law of assumption, of, of impressing the subconscious mind, and of, of asserting your I amness. And so I want to talk about that tonight because, because Muhammad Ali's story, I want to talk about it from a metaphysical perspective tonight because it's a powerful, powerful story. So, let, and as you know, Muhammad Ali was just known for talking a great game, right? He walked and he walked the talk, right? But here's, here's a quote from him. I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. Hear the wording here. I figured that if I said it enough, I would convince the world that I was really the greatest. Look at the story that, that Muhammad Ali created here. Remember, in 1960, he won the gold at the Summer Olympics for the light heavyweight division. Then he had his mind set, his mind's eye, on the heavyweight title. He saw it, he knew it, he imagined it. Right? And then, and then he trained for it. And then, uh, and then I think it was in 1962 when Sonny Liston beat um, Floyd uh, Patterson and knocked him out in the first round that Sonny Liston became the world champ. So it was all set for February 1964 when, my, when Cassius Clay, a 22-year-old talkative, confident guy, fighter, that won the 1960 gold medal, would go up against Sonny Liston, right? The odds were incredible. They were seven or eight to one against Ali or against Cassius Clay. And this is what, this is what uh, Muhammad Ali says. I am the greatest. He's known as the greatest. I am, I am, this is your I am, this, the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. In other words, even before I was, I could consciously convince my conscious mind, my ego mind, that I was the greatest. I figured that if I said it enough, repetition, frequency, emotion, I, I would convince the world that I was really the greatest. I would become it, right? I would become the greatest. I am the greatest. This is a perfect story. Then he, then he talks about the word impossible. Impossible is just a word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world. They've been given than to explore the power, they have to change it. Let's take this first part here. Impossible is just a word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in a world they've been given. In other words, the, the world that, you, that you've been indoctrinated in, the 3D world, the beliefs, the assumptions, the core beliefs of linear time, of limitation, of that you can't be, do, or have what you want. Look at the wording here. That the, instead, of, instead of then exploring the power, they have to change it. Wow, that's powerful. Impossible's not a fact. This is Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. Impossible's not a fact. There are no facts. There are, there's no fiction, there's no facts, there's no nothing. It's just what you believe. It's not an opinion, it's an opinion. Impossible is potential. I love that pointing to the field 
of possibilities, the quantum field, the God field of all things are possible. Impossible is potential. Wow. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. So big, guys, so big. Let's really hit this tonight. So, and this is be before the, the Sonny Liston fight, once it was set up, right? Because remember, he won the Olympics in 1960. He had his, his dream. He knew his dream. He imagined it. He lived it. He became it. Remember, he's demonstrating a perfect demonstration of the law of assumption, right? Assuming that he's it. He didn't, he didn't say, I'm, I, I, okay, me, me as Cassius Clay, what do I have to believe to become Muhammad Ali, to become the champion, to, be, to become the greatest? Instead, I am the greatest. And let all the beliefs, all the assumptions form around that. Do you hear it? This is deductive. I am God. And then all the assumptions, the whole world forms around that. That's what he did. He didn't go from, I'm small. How do I become big? I am the greatest. And this is what he says about, um, about listen, he goes, he'll fall in eight to prove that I'm great. He'll fall in eight. In other words, he'll fall in eight rounds, right? To prove I'm great. He'll knock him out. Muhammad Ali will knock him out in eight rounds. And, he, and of course, here, of course, we all know what happened in February 1960. He knocked out a technical knockout, Sonny Liston in, in the seventh round. Sonny did not go back <laughs> for the eighth round. He was beat up, right? So against all odds, literally eight or seven to one, Ali, he beat Liston. But look at the words here. He'll fall in eight. Remember, you play all the parts. So you are Sonny Liston, you are Muhammad Ali, you are Cassius Clay. You're all of those. He'll fall in eight, meaning that old you, that old man, that unwanted reality, that unwanted identity will fall to the side. Wow. Will fall in eight to prove, to demonstrate your new reality. Wow. You're detaching from the old and demonstrating your new identity, who you are now, to prove that I'm great, I am great. So big, losing the old identity. And of course we know what happened, right? The limited, and then, the, so in that same year, remember that same year, it said that he renounced his slave name, Cassius, right? He, he renounced Ca oh, Cassius Clay, Clay. He renounced that, that, that his slave name, Clay, or Cassius Clay, and just think of that. Remember, Neville even points to that, right? That God became man so man could become God. So you come down into the world of limitation and you feel like you're in bondage in that old version of yourself, that limited version of yourself, that, can't, that limited version of that's living in fear. So he renounced that. Muhammad Ali renounced that. That's the old you. He renounced the old reality, the old identity. Wow. And changed his name to Muhammad Ali to reflect what? His new beliefs his new beliefs, the beliefs that he is unlimited, the belief that, that, that impossible is not impossible, that all things are possible, that I am the greatest. I am, this is what he says, I am the greatest. I am the prettiest. I am the wisest. Who's the greatest? I am. I am. That's what he says. That's the metaphysical story. No longer a slave to your old reality. No longer a slave to your old identity. No longer a slave to your to your limited identity. Remember, we're taking a metaphysical view of this, right? Representing, it's representing your rising consciousness, dropping your old assumptions, dropping your old beliefs, dropping the old man. So big. And then Neville got it. And again, in, his Feb, in this 19th, thank you, Mitch, again, in that February 1964 lecture, his eternal play, he refers to Paul in 2 Timothy 4, 7, when Paul says, I fought the good fight. And Neville says, well, well, I, I think of it more as a play or a game because, and he says this, this is what Neville says, but because the end is predetermined, I cannot altogether call it a fight because the end is predetermined. We, he, it's all, creation's finished, right? This is what he's saying here. He says, be, be, and then he goes on, he goes, I cannot all together call a fight because the fight, like tonight's fight, February, <laughs> not like tonight's fight, this is the night with Cassius Clay taking on Sonny Liston against all odds, right? Is most uncertain. This is what he says, because tonight's fight 
is most uncertain as you heard the outcome. He say, he say, he's saying it's uncertain. It, it was supposed to be sunny. The whole world was behind sunny. Oh, it's going to be a massacre. Sunny is going to cream them, right? That, that, you know, that, that Cassius Clay is all talk and he's a light puncher. And you can't, he's not, you know, he's fast, but he's, he's light, you know? And so this is what happened. All the wisdom, this is what Neville Goddard says, all the wisdom of the world put it on one person because of his record on Sonny Liston. And the other fellow won. The other fellow, catch this clay. All the wisdom of the world means nothing in the eyes of God, or in other words, the eyes of that I am. When you declare I am the greatest and you believe it and you impress that, on your subconscious, meaning you do that by assuming it. It's a law of assumption. You deductively, right? We talk about this quite a bit, right? About a lot of questions on reprogramming or, or impressing the subconscious. That's how you do it. The, Neville's giving us the roadmap, is giving us the example with Cassius Clay. You, you, you repeat it, you declare it, you feel it, you imagine it. And then that's how it's done. It's always, a, it's always conscious, right? And yes, of course, you do your state akin to sleep and you fall asleep with it. But Cassius Clay just became it, deductively declared, I am the greatest. And the whole world formed around that. He believed, right? So all the wisdom of the world put it on one person because of a record and the other fellow won. All the wisdom of the world means nothing in the eyes of God. So, and this is what, and this is what um, Neville continues to say in this lecture. Mitch, I know, it's brilliant. The one fellow who won, did you see him on TV? This is Neville talking to the, the others in the lecture audience. Who is the greatest? In other words, this is like the question that Jesus asked in a few videos ago that we talked about. Who, who do people say I, the Son of Man is? Who do people say Cassius Clay is? But, but who do they say I am? And, he, and Jesus repeats it. And this is what Cassius Clay is doing, or Muhammad Ali. He goes, who's the greatest? Cassius Clay. He answers himself. Who's the prettiest? Cassius Clay. Who's the biggest? Cassius Clay. Who's the wisest? Cassius Clay. And he beat that, this is what Neville says, and he beat that into his mind's eye. And he said, I'll take him before eight because I'm great. Wow, do you see this? Do you see what Matthew 15, 16, 14, and 15, when Jesus says, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say that Cassius Clay is? That's representing the Son of Man, that, that spiritual potential within that's not yet realized until, of course, it's Muhammad Ali, until, they, until it's that new identity. Do you see it? But he wins. And, and, but who do you say I am? Wow, powerful demonstration of the law of assumption and consciously, consciously impressing that greater subconscious with your new identity and new concept of yourself. So powerful today. So the conscious mind impresses the subconscious while the subconscious expresses all that is impressed upon it. This is Neville got it, right? This is Neville got it breaking it down. This is the law of assumption. It's, it's, it, it, it's assuming you are it. That's how you impress it. You assume, you declare, you become it. Yes, there's some repetition, there's, there's imagining, there's emotion involved, there's all that involved, right? But that's what we're talking about. The subconscious does not originate ideas, but accepts as true that which the conscious mind feels to be true in a way only known to itself objectifies the accepted ideas. Could, so objectifies it. Remember, the subconscious doesn't originate ideas, but accepts them as true, accepts everything, does not reject anything right? But only those that you believe that are true. But it's still accepted. It just doesn't mean not everything is expressed. Only the things that you truly embody. Do you get it? That you embody, that you imagine, that you claim that is yours with emotion, right? So it's not that it rejects anything. The subconscious doesn't have that power. It's powerful and it's, it's infinitely more powerful creatively than the conscious mind but it has no power to refuse it. No power to decide which, to, to, what things to, um, uh, what ideas to accept and what ideas to reject. It can, it has to accept everything. The conscious you, the 3D you, has that discriminating power, right? Has that self-conscious power of free will to choose what ideas it wants to, to, to um, pursue 
and drop into the subconscious. That's big, right? And then it goes on and say, control, Neville says, control of the subconscious is accomplished. Hear this, this is big. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. The power to imagine and feel. That's how, so you don't control it directly, you control it through your ideas, the things you choose, the free will to choose what ideas that you want to pursue. What do you want to be, do, or have? I, what do you want to declare? I am the greatest, I am the prettiest, I am the wisest. What do you want to declare? With feeling, with passion, with imagination. It's not so much that you're totally unaware, I've talked about this before, of your subconscious beliefs and assumptions, but that you believe them to be so true, so real, you believe them to be reality versus just beliefs and assumptions about reality. That's why sometimes the subconscious appears to, to, to just, to just um, demonstrate things that we don't believe that we, we really want. But it's because we believe those assumptions are so true that we don't even think about them anymore. We put them on autopilot in the subconscious and we believe that's reality. Do you hear it? Once you start questioning everything and decide what you want to believe, now you have control. What you want to believe, with, with what you want to imagine, what you want to feel. Wow. <laughs> so big today, right? The, and then I just want to go over the Pearl of Great Price, another Neville teaching based on scripture, of course, of Matthew 14, 45, 46. But this is the, this is the key to your imagination. This is the key to, that, that Ali knew as he said, I am the greatest, right? I am the prettiest. I, and then he said, I, I am the double greatest. I think he said something like that, right? It takes everything that you now believe in other, in other than it to pay for it. That's the pearl of great price. Remember in scripture, when, when Jesus compares the, the pearl, uh, the merchant of pearls to the kingdom of heaven, he goes, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. He went all in on what? Kingdom of heaven. What's the kingdom of heaven? That's your I am. That's your ability, that's the, that's your ability to, to be anything, that, that all things are possible to I am. All things are possible to God. That's the kingdom of heaven, right? But, but as Neville points out, it takes everything that you now believe in other than it to pay for it. Everything that you now believe in, other than it to pay for the pearl of great price. You can't hold on to one thing you now believe in as a power that controls your life and still hope to buy the pearl of great price. Do you see that? You can't hold on to one thing that you now believe as a power that controls your life and still hope to buy the pearl of great price. Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, bought the pearl of great price, went all in on that I am, right? That's really what we're talking about, guys. That's impressing and reprogramming the subconscious mind. That's the law of assumption. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Guys, this is the um, uh, membership channel. Welcome to it. And I'm glad you're all with us. There are going to be more videos, uh, more content. A lot more is going to come as this channel, as both channels grow. And of course, there'll be more content on the, on the public channel as well. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. That's an open group, but it's private. So you can join it. We'll add you and then you can share privately, it won't be shared to the world between you, ideas and guidance and insights and stories. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, or, or just um, uh, go to our website anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. With great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.